loop down your holes your u-joint caps are going to go back into and just baby your caps off real slow and centered so you don't drag any of the needles out with it look in there make sure they're all in there and upright one missing will cause a problem looks good next thing I need to do is feed this one of these ends into this hole with a cap coming through at the same time once you stick the u-joint in there without the caps on it onto the larger section stick it all the way through the bottom and use the cap on there centered so it doesn't drag any needle bearings out of the sides and then drop it down in there now kind of a short way I'm going to take a hammer and tap this dry shaft down onto this cap at least halfway or better without putting too much force on this put a piece of newspaper to keep any particles from hitting the stub on the joint you need to have the dry shaft perfectly level so it's a, and watch to make sure the cap starts in square and level all the way across as it goes up in there that went pretty easy you just push it through far enough to where your clip will barely slide on there just a fraction too far but it'll it'll drive back down and that clip is installed okay now I've walked this center U joint halfway out of the cap that's installed and I'll slip this one on and center it and take a hammer and hit the center of it and get it started down in there check your needle bearings before you install it to make sure there's none out of place you get one laid down behind this and you're going to have a problem trying to get your clip in because it'll expand the distance and the clip won't you have to take it all back apart just lift up on this and get it centered in this cap and get it sticking halfway out of the ear and ease this cap right on there yeah we've got it started be sure not to damage the outside edge of your cap these are so big I can hit the center of them without any adapter and just drive it down until you can get the other clip in there Make sure your clip is seated all the way around. The same amount. It's a little stiff. Now do the other side. Ease both of your caps off. Spray some penetrating oil in these ears. Look for your alignment marks. Here's one right through here. And here's this one. So the yoke goes on this way. one of the caps on Just 
keep make sure it goes in centered support this stub shaft okay that's pretty good when it went a little too far that's not a problem just take a blunt punch take the center cross Just hit the base of it. Go ahead and install that clip. Just cross and drive it against that clip. Should be looking at this now. I'm going to fish it half off of this to get this pin sticking up out of the center and slip this other cap on there. Just hold your thumb on the center and the outer ear as a control about sliding it off of this one. You don't want it to drop clear off of the other side or problems may arise. Okay, that's slipped on there. I'll grab a hold of this to keep it centered on this one and take a hammer and tap this down in there. Once it gets over halfway down in there, just Beat the back side of it and drive it home until you can get the clip in the underside of it. Just let your other opposing U joint cap hang off of something so this can push it down against the other clip. Walk your clip around, make sure it settles all the way around. And if it does, snap it in there any binding you'll have to drive a little further or harder double check all four clips to make sure that they're seated fully you don't want that coming off and then I'll take some brake cleaner this has a shim still stuck on it take some brake cleaner and clean these splines off both ends Verify your alignment marks. And we'll prep it for putting it back in there. Once you're satisfied, all the clips are retained and you've got movement both ways. Nothing went wrong. Put your grease fitting in if it has one on it. Looks good. Now that the U joints are installed and the dirt and stuff off the splines on the drive shaft. Go ahead and take a wire brush, scraper, whatever, and get all the excess rust off of this wheel bearing hub assembly mounting surface. Make it pretty clean. And clean the scale off your back brake plate and wheel bearing surfaces. If you wonder what your old gasket boxes are good for, here it is. I've cut a piece out of the side of the box where it encloses both halves. And I'll use this as a guide to go back into the axle tube to keep it from dragging a bunch of rust and stuff with it.
Good enough. Got the wheel bearing mounting surface clean, the inside cleaned out. We've got a cardboard guide for the axle shaft to go through. I put some 90 weight on the end of the axle. The seal area and the splines. The wheel bearing and the back brake plate surfaces have been prepped and are crap free. Now it's time to stick the axle back in there and feed it down that cardboard into the seal. Okay, that did well. I'm going to apply some high temperature wheel bearing grease to both sides of this seal and inside of it before installing it. Make sure everything is clean in there. Push your seal back in. The wheel bearing will go up against this and hold all this back more or less. I'm going to put some grease all over this. Grease your needle bearings with some high temperature grease. Grease your wheel bearing o-ring all the way around. I kind of grease this bevel. that o-ring insert and mount your wheel bearing with the ABS since they're facing up at 12 o'clock don't forget your back brake dust shield these hub and bearing nuts torque to 135 foot-pounds went ahead and fastened the ABS cable down to the spindle Just laid it up there. I'm going to stick the rotor back on and match it up with the alignment marks I made. Make sure this face is clean and there's no debris laying on it. The wheel bearing flange, hub assembly. I'm going to stick the brake caliper with hanger back on to the spindle. These big bolts go through the caliper hanger or anchor plate whatever you want to call it torque to 165 foot pounds both of them if you took the caliper bolts loose they torque to 42 foot pounds each go ahead and route the ABS cable back along its route into the frame all right if you took this tie rod in loose Go ahead and wrestle it into place. Not on it, torques of 67 foot pounds. Just make sure you ain't got any problems with your beveled hole. Put a little bit of wheel bearing grease along the axle splines to the back. And then put these three shims back in it. The composite nut shim goes in between the two steel washers and then secure the snap ring back in the composite washer must go between the two metal ones reach in back and grab a hold of your u-joint and pull the axle forward if the clip's not reaching the slot back in there a lot of times the axle will be in too far just jerk jerk axle forward to the back of it 
make sure the clip's seated all the way around. And put your lockout assembly back together, whatever one you have. Once your manual lockout's installed, put the wheel on there. The lug nuts torque to 165 foot pounds. Oh, wait a minute. And take it for a little test drive. Do both sides, one into it. I've already took the manual lockout off of it. U joints stuck. Whichever way the steering wheel is turned last, it really calls it the wheel hop. That's nice. 